Hello everyone, Mr. Merkic here, and today is part 10 of the tutorial how to make a TU8 mod menu for MW2. And today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to, well, not really how to, I'm going to be explaining about moving bases because uh, James's base is clear, it's not the best. Um, I, I prefer hack sources over it. Uh, nowadays, if you make a menu, it's pretty much going to be used for online use as. Before, when James's base was out, pretty online, like weren't around um, as much, uh, and now most menus are for online use. So you need to make sure that they're stable and they can run with a full lobby. Uh, so that's the focus when making a menu. So uh, if you switch to Hack Sources base, which I do prefer, like recommend, uh, you will have to remake the menu, but. Um, before you, before you just get started, I'm, in this video I'm going to explain to you about how this base works because obviously it's different. They do they do the same things. Um, everything's the same, but they do it in different ways. So I'm just going to show you how this is this does it pretty much. Um, to get this base, let me get rid of this. <coughs> I, I will upload this to Mediafire, and sorry about my voice. Uh, but videos because my visual studio has been like messed up it wasn't building stuff uh, i don't know what happened but i had to system restore my computer and go back to like the 18th of may which was annoying but yeah now everything's working so i, I can make these videos again uh so basically to get this base like i said i'll put a download link in but uh if you come on i'll put a link for this as well Basically, Unsigned Mods released a, a fixed version of Hacksaw's base, and all that's fixed was the lag at the main menu and um, the shaders went sharp when you restart it. Now, I'll give this a try, but uh, something happened when I was on the menu, like it copied, like I was in a sub menu and the main menu come oh, like overwrite over it, and it was really messy. So, uh, I'm not going to use this. Obviously, if you want, I'll put the link there anyway, if you want to use that one. Uh, First of all, I'll show you how to prevent the lag at the main menu. All that it requires is, if you come under the commands, uh, underneath the news bar, uh, just under under here, all it requires is a sleep. And then pretty much that little line there will prevent the whole lag at the main menu. So that is really simple. Um, another thing now, uh, this is his news bar. This is so much different uh, from James's base because it uses features and functions like move over time. And this is how, if if you've probably ever seen a menu, maybe one of my menus, uh, like call opening animations and movements. Basically, they use this function and it's really smooth instead of uh, using what we did in James's base. Uh, so let's go back to the top obviously defining all your stuff up here uh, and, and they use structs for this menu and I've closed it uh, so basically it knows if it's open it, it, everything's done here like, here's all the HUDLM struct so basically all your defining it um, if you remember in James's base when we added a different a different shader. Oh, in this one it's it's done much more differently. Uh, you you need to, you add everything here basically. Not if uh, uh, I like to just have everything together, but I like to put gaps. So I know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, if you wanted to add another one, come to this end, a comma, and then the little star. Then you add your name, obviously. And then that is how you would add a shader to this one. And now that error will go eventually. It's just so yeah. Once you've added a shader up here, obviously you can add as many as you want. Well, not as many as you want, but quite a few. You'd come down to the the startup method, and this is where you actual like cache it. So I think I did shader one. I always
So yeah, that is how you would add a shader and make sure it's working. Basically, if you don't add this line, you'll you start your game uh, fatal crash. Simple as that. Uh, uh, so the news bar in this menu is here. It's basically set in the text here. That's the text of the news bar if you want to edit that to your liking. Uh, and basically how this works, he, he's setting the text to 1600 on the, which is on the right side. And if we come back down to the bottom of here, this move over time function, uh, it's basically moving it from its current position. It's And it's moving it from 1600 to minus 1300. And basically this bit here is an all client like loop, so it's all client. And then it, it's giving it a sleep, and it's it's like teleporting it back over to 1,600 again, where it just continues doing it. So it go from here to here to here to here, like just constantly until the game ends. Uh, what this code does is, if the game's loaded, it, it basically gets rid of all the HUD like heads up display. So there's nothing in the way of the menu or anything. It just looks really nice and clean. Um. Obviously, this base is D-pad controls. Um, everything is done with N19. Uh, I do have a list of um, every button and what it, every number of the button, and I'll put that in the description of the video as well because you might want to change it. Like I think number 19 is menu open, and then yeah, that's menu open. Uh, number 18 it says scroll up d-pad up d-pad down so yeah you've got to um, get used to what these stand for so I'll have a list of that um, another thing in James's base we set every text individually like say you'd have your own set text the whole line would just say self menu the game menu uh, this one's actually really like better I think it saves a lot more it's saving a lot more HUD, like HUD elements, because you can. They're doing. He's doing it in just one line of code, one one HUD element. This is basically one line of code and one text. But the slash n means new line, and he's just doing it in one line, which I think is a lot more. It's much much better. Um, another thing that you'll need to know is these are the sub menus here. It's, there's a function called swap menu, which will take which will take you in. And you've got to take note that the, of these numbers at the end of the line. You can add as many options as you want, but you've got to make sure you count how many you've added. Because, obviously, this is the title, so uh, this one don't matter. But you count, and this number here, the number 3, is is how many options are actually in the menu. I know it, I know there's 4, uh, but I think you do one less, like, like in James's base again. Uh, so, so yeah, that I think that should be four actually, but I'm not too sure. Um, so you put that to how many options are in the menu, and this number next to it, the number one, is is actually what menu it is. So obviously this is line number menu one, and you can see two and three, and and so on like that. And you just add underneath this break, you'd add K to three, and then the next swap menu. Uh, obviously, what you want to do, and make sure you put four instead, because a lot of people don't don't even realise, and they mess up their menu and, and are stuck. Uh, and now you switch to the options, and this is where you add basically all your. Stuff. This is only case one, uh, and you'll just have to add case two as you go along. So case one is just for number one, this line here. So these options are for that for that line so that's where you put your options in this menu basically all all this is your controls which I've, I've I've sort of said already about this is where uh, like you do the animation stuff if you see when the menu is opened uh, there's a scale over time function which means it either gets bigger or smaller and it, it's from zero and it zoom and it like zooms out to this position and this is the actual width and height of the shader because if you want to change the width of the height of the shader it won't actually work because 
uh, where where they're actually setting it is set it to zero zero, and the width and height is actually here. So you'll need to change these numbers here, because if I go back up now, uh, set shader shader, as you can see, it's actually zero zero. You could change that to whatever you want; it wouldn't change because yeah, I had that error. Um, another thing is if you want to change the color of a shader. Uh, as you can see you've got black and white basically black means if you have black uh, you could have any color you want as the RGBs oh crap so these are the RGBs uh, you could have any color you want but if you had black this should always be black you need to make sure that you have white if you want that shader to be colored and then you can have your RGBs of course and then it will work uh, another thing that you'll need to know um, would be uh, probably the, the scroll bar. The scroll bar in this works a bit more differently. Um, if you increase the size of the text or move it, you need to make sure that the scroll bar is actually customized to fit that text because, like I said, it's one line of text, it's not just it's not just each individual one so it needs to be perfectly fitting for that sort of text and size uh, if you look now I think it's again yeah it's set to zero zero but the actual width and height of the menu is down here I'm sure uh, scroll bar yeah so it, it's in height and how this works is uh, wherever it is, I've gone past it. Actually, if you see 170, it's adding 170 because that is where that is where the menu starts. And like, ugh, I, don't, I can't explain it very well, but you need to just adapt that number so it fits the text. Uh, so yeah. It's, I'd, I'd prefer, I much prefer this base to use. It, it takes a little while to get used to because um, the, everything's like uh, there's two aligns in each text now. Uh, some, some I know some people have been having issues. If I can take away and add a comma and it tells me the function, and as you can see, there's a, a two aligns and the screen's different. So if you if you were just to copy and paste your set text function from James's base where you've been making a menu and pasted it in here it won't work or it won't be the same because he actually uses more uh, parameters for each one and the, the, the like I, can't, I don't really know how to explain it the, the pixels of the screen are different in this base but that's why it takes some while getting used to and once you get used to it honestly it's, it's much better so yeah, that's basically the switching bases, and I'm going to make a video straight after this uh, about actually doing doing stuff in this base, so I don't know if it will be out today or later on tomorrow, but yeah, there will be another video soon. I just wanted to make this to explain a bit about the base, so you don't just go on it yourself and have to figure things out, so yeah, if you did like the video... Uh, be sure to comment and like and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time.